too much tweeting, not enough presenting. <laughs> okay, next up, if I don't lie to myself, is John, who is going to be talking about the most intriguing topic I can think of, which is synthetic biology. So, <laughs> science hats on. Yeah. Engineering hats on. <laughs> oh, yeah. And a little bit of science as well. Ready? I'm ready. <laughs> so you know that we're doomed. We've got to get off this rock. Uh, that's why we're here. Synthetic biology is the key to doing it. Uh, and I'm going to explain what it is and how we can use it for resource utilization. I'm at NASA Ames four days a week. I run a Symbio incubator at Singularity University for one day a week. Um, so you know that it's the cost of putting things in a space that's inhibiting us from going there. If we could utilize the resources in space so that we didn't have to take everything with us, then that will uh, open up uh, a whole new future to us. Well, Neumann first proposed self-replicating machines, and I was just in a session that someone organized on it. Biology is a self-replicating machine. A cell can double every 20 minutes. In 24 hours, you can go from a single cell to a billion cells. Biology is also a manufacturing technology, and with genetic engineering, we can choose what you want to manufacture. Change the genetic code of the gene, it will change the structure and the function of the protein that it produces, and each cell can produce millions of proteins. Uh, the genome is the operating system of the cell. So the genome encodes all of the information to control the cell, which proteins are produced, which enzymes are made, the, fu the function, the structure. Um, and just uh, in the last uh, three years, we've now, uh, it's been seen that we can rewrite that in entire operating system of the cell. And this is work by Craig Venter's group. Not only can we read the entire sequence of the genome, but we can now write the entire sequence of the genome as well. Uh, so synthetic biology is trying to turn biology into an engineering discipline rather than just a scientific pursuit. Why do things happen? Uh, now we can ask if we can make it, then we understand it. So it's all about the engineering of biology, and we hope we can have a desktop machine that you can just print the whole organism. Really, in 10 years, I think we're going to have that. A wonderful quote, over the next 20 years, synthetic genomics is going to be the standard, is going to become the standard for making anything. Um, and the price of sequencing and synthesing is dropping dramatically. On the left there, in full color, the purple strand, the spider silk, strands of spider silk protein coming out the back of a spider. The others you're more familiar with, a pine cone or, or an elephant tusk. Biology produces fantastic structures, and, and it's now becoming we can control those fantastic structures by rewriting genomes. ISIU bringing in the space aspect in situ resource utilization. You could take all the food from Earth with you, it's not sustainable. You could take a tree from Earth with you, but it's a rather large infrastructure, or you could take the seed. Uh, Prince Henry, the navigator of Portugal in the 14 and 1500s, there was an unwritten rule that any explorer that landed on a deserted island would leave sheep on the island. Why? So that the next person that landed on the island didn't find a deserted uh, island, but found something that could be eaten. Uh, at some point, following the discovery of Santa Maria, the sheep were let loose. There was not much interest among the Portuguese people in an isolated island world hundreds of miles from civilization. But if you put the resources on those isolated islands, then uh, it's a different story. And that's what I'm proposing. Uh, the resources are already there in the form of elemental uh, compositions, water, uh, uh, everything that biology needs. There's a lot of carbon just on the lunar ice. Here's an infrastructure where you can melt that lunar ice, take out all the volatiles, pass it into a bioreactor with a, a robotic infrastructure, and beam the sequence of the organism that you want to make in that bioreactor from Earth. So you want food, great. You want biomaterial, great. Food's a great example. Spirulina, a cyanobacterium that is sold in health food shops. A 30 liter reactor would be enough to feed uh, a single human from in situ carbon and water that you might find on the moon. Uh, NASA is also interested in not just photosynthesis, uh, but electrosynthesis. So by electrosynthesis, not only you don't want sunlight to give you the energy for metabolism, but you want electricity. This is one thing that we're now uh, looking at in all these possible materials. I've thrown some eye candy of some early things that we did, the idea of terraforming an asteroid, getting the resources not from lunar ice, Martian ice, but from asteroids. There has been water found on, on asteroids in the main belt, so it's not completely science fiction. Um, some other ideas orbiting food producers. We know that NASA is interested in orbital depots for water. Well, we know that there's the carbon and the other elements that biology needs. So why not orbital depots for producing food in space to support human exploration? 
uh, space economies, if you have a depot in space, you could hook it up to a bioreactor, be producing food, and Elon can dock with you on his way to Mars <laughs> to pick up a delicious, nutritious, slim fast break for breakfast, and one for lunch, and a proper meal in the evening. Uh, the potential of synthetic biology in space, I have some beautiful posters at NASA that I didn't bring with me. Uh, if anyone wants one, you, uh, give me your email uh, and I can send you one. So I think that's the last slide. I might have put in a plug for 